True Bleeder was an 18-year-old rapper who was on his way up in the industry. But before he could make it out, the wild streets of Baton Rouge caught up to him and he was tragically killed in February 2022. His death was a major blow to the Baton Rouge rap scene, but most people don't know just how crazy the situation was. So today, we're breaking down the story of True Bleeder and the war in Baton Rouge. True Bleeder came up on the north side of Baton Rouge. Not much is known about his early life, but we know he had a wild come up in the streets. He was always getting in trouble as a kid, and he actually went to six different middle schools where he decided to drop out in sixth grade at 15 years old. True Bleedy was always interested in music and started rapping with his older brothers, Kimon and Cole Bleeder, when he was just eight years old. But when True Bleeder was 10, his brother Kimon was tragically shot and killed at a birthday party. It all started with a beef between a crew named Acres Fam and a rap group named Jungle Music. It's not clear why they had issues, but it ended up with three teens losing their lives. In March 2014, Jungle Music was hosting a birthday party and concert in a town close to Baton Rouge called Baker. A 16-year-old named Scrappy, Acres Fam, had an issue with a dude affiliated with Jungle Music and Javon Simmons. Nobody knows what the beef was all about, but Scrappy walked into the party and aired it out. He shot Simmons first, and everyone started running. Scrappy kept shooting, and by the time it was over, three bystanders were dead, including True Bleed's brother, Kimon. Scrappy got hit with second-degree murder charges, but he ended up pleading guilty to three counts of manslaughter instead. During the sentencing hearing, Scrappy said, Everything happened so fast. I took three lives, and I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. The judge gave him 40 years in prison, but the families of his victims didn't think it was enough. An 18-year-old named DeAndre Claiborne was killed during the shooting, and his mother told Scrappy, I'm not sympathetic by no means. I'm a God-fearing woman. I don't think 40 years is enough for taking away a lifetime. Kimon's death had a massive impact on True Bleeder. He was only 10 years old when it went down, but he later started the Bleeders with his brother Cole Bleeder, and this is when the situation in Baton Rouge started getting messy. The Bleeders are linked up with sets like the 5400 Boys, 300, and TBG. Fredo Bang was actually best friends with DeAndre Claiborne, aka Crazy Trey, who was one of the victims during the shooting where True Bleeder's brother Kimon died. TBG is the crew that Youngboy used to rep before he split up and helped spark a deadly war in the city, and now the beef is crazier than ever. The Bleeders' main ops is a set called the Vultures. They have rappers in their crew like YKWIHF Ka and YKWIHF Vey, who used to be tied with True Bleeder's brother Kimon before the drama started. They're linked up with sets like Six The Crew, which is also why Youngboy's 4K Trey Camp rocks with that side. Youngboy's little brother B-Way Youngie reps Six The Crew, which makes the Bleeders Youngboy's ops too. Youngboy's homie Ben 10 has major issues with them, and the Bleeders allegedly killed a couple of his family members. A lot of the dudes from both sides were pulled back in the day, and it's not clear how the beef started, but in 2020, the streets of Baton Rouge started getting more violent than ever. YKWIHF Ka was allegedly caught hooking up with the baby mama of a rapper and BME Peasy. Ka allegedly killed him and got booked for the murder, but later the charges were dropped due to lack of evidence. According to his family, Ka started trying to turn his life around and was focused on his newborn daughter. But last year, he was shot and killed outside of a Holiday Inn. Ka and his fiance were sitting in the car in the parking lot when somebody started letting off shots in broad daylight. His fiance survived the shooting, but unfortunately, Ka was pronounced dead at the scene. It's not clear who was behind the hit, but rumors say the bleeders might have been involved. Then just three days later, Ben 10's homie Mugatti was shot and killed outside of his house. Losing someone like that is already bad enough. But two days after Mugatti died, Ben 10 took another loss when his cousin was shot and killed right in front of him. Ben 10 and his cousin Jug were driving down to 110 near a town called Prairieville, Louisiana, when somebody pulled up on them and started letting off shots. The police found their truck in the middle of the road, with Jug dead behind the wheel and Ben 10 sitting next to him. The Vultures had lost three homies back to back, and at the same time, True Bleeder was starting to pop off on the music side. He started uploading tracks to YouTube in 2020, but last year, he started popping off with tracks like Play For Keeps, Trouble Soul, and Check My Jacket. It looked like True Bleeder was going to be the next rapper out of Baton Rouge to take it far in the game. But then in February, he was murdered in a drive-by outside of the Mall of Louisiana. On February 25th, True Bleeder, Cold Bleeder, and two of their homies was at the mall together. Baton Rouge don't have a lot of places to shop, so it's always a chance you'll run into the ops at a place like the mall. Cold Bleeder says he knew they was hanging around too long to try to get True to hurry up. But True wasn't worried about the situation and just took his time. Apparently, somebody got the drop in their location though, because right when they left, a car pulled up and started letting off shots. It's not clear exactly how everything went down, but the bleeders shot back while the shooters left their whip and hopped into a getaway car. Unfortunately, True and his homie Clifton Lindsay were both killed in the shooting. A couple months later, a dude named Dubug was arrested for the hit. Dubug's from a set called Bankstown and was tight with Shaw from the Vulture. It looked like True Bleeder's case was going to get solved quickly, but now he's being held until they can get enough evidence against him to start the trial. After True Bleeder was killed, the ops started dissing him on social media immediately. Van Ten hopped on live, listening to the last song True Bleeder dropped before his death. Then some vultures clowned him by saying his homies were going to be wearing funeral clothes. 
Before he died, one of the dudes True Bleed to work with all the time was his homie TG Commas. They had a lot of tracks together, like Preaching, Real Love, and Play For Keeps, but now Commas linking up with the Ops. Youngboy previewed a new track where he shouted out Commas and said, I just talked to Commas, what's going on, I got you. It's not clear how they ended up squashing the beef, but linking up with Youngboy could be huge for Commas' career. Moving past the violence, trying to make it in the industry is a great thing, but obviously, not everyone's cool with the situation. True Bleed his cousin Jermaine hopped on IG and wrote, F*** a million dollars. My cousin dead. I ain't squashing nothing. Thomas could just keep the beef going and just cause more violence or end up dead himself. But instead, he's trying to make it out the streets and level up. And if more dudes had that mentality, the rap game wouldn't be losing so many talented artists before they even get a chance to grow up. Even Cole Bleeder don't want anything to do with his city. It's not clear how he feels about Kama's situation, but he's not worried about putting Baton Rouge on his back or anything like that. He says the goal is to get everyone's money up so they leave and never look back. Baton Rouge has always been a wild city, but the last few years have been even crazier. Hopefully, Cole Bleeder keeps grinding in the industry and is able to make it out of the streets. He's already lost two brothers to gun violence, and it would be a tragedy if he went out the same way. Rest in peace to True Bleeder and everyone else in the story who lost their life.